Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video we're going to take a look at the settings on the Samsung Omnia Pro B7610. There are a lot of settings that you can change on this device, so let's get started and go through them. I'm going to go into the settings application, and you don't get the usual Windows Mobile settings. In fact, I haven't found a way to get there yet, and that's actually not such a good thing, because there are some things in there that I, I, I wish I could change, but I can't. So if anyone out there knows how to get into the regular settings, please respond to this video with a comment or send us a message on YouTube. Anyhow, let's go into each of these things. We can start off in sound settings, where we can change, for example, the ring. We can change the type of ring, and we tap on that, we get a drop-down list, different types of rings, how it will vibrate, there's a rhythmic vibration. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's 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 vibrating at different frequencies. So that one's a little bit faster. Very interesting to see different types of of vibration for the ring. It's kind of cool actually. Uh, let's go back. We can do the notification sound when something happens. If you have a new text message, you can you can play a sound or not play a sound. A much more spruced up interface compared to the standard Win Windows Mobile settings. You don't have checkboxes. You have these little green dots that go inside of these little, uh, it looks like little LEDs almost. Let's click cancel. We can change voicemail, SMS, and so on and so forth. We can also change the touch alert. You may be hearing a sound after every tap. And right now I can turn that off if I want. None. So now it doesn't make a sound when I tap things, but I'm going to leave it on just so you can get an idea of when I'm actually tapping the screen. We can go to the hardware buttons tone, so when you press one of the hardware buttons, it will make a sound, and right now that's turned on. So I'll leave it like that. Let's go back to the next item, display and light. So we can change the wallpaper, and it goes into the photo picker, so you can choose your own picture, or you can choose one of the more good-looking, I think, uh, Samsung Omnia wallpapers. You get quite a, a large variety to choose from. And these are some from the, uh, the Omnia 2 that you may remember, and these are some snow pictures that I loaded onto a micro SD card. So you can change the wallpaper, you can change the theme to various Windows Mobile themes. Basically, it'll change the, the, the color of the top and bottom bar, but not too much else. Although, if you're using the default Windows Mobile Today screen, you'll also see a, a different background based on what you select here. We can change items on Today, and we went through this before, so right now I have Samsung Today turned on, but if you want to uncheck that and go back to the standard old Windows Mobile Today screen, you can do date and messaging and owner info, or you can just do the titanium interface, which is Windows default, can check that and it will uncheck everything else. I'm going to click uh, click OK. We can change the large indicator and what that means is up at the top here, if you tap on any of those icons, you get these larger buttons on the screen. This is actually the pretty cool way to change the system volume. And you can turn that on or off if you want it to go back to the default Windows Mobile look, but it makes a lot of sense to have that finger-friendly uh, notification area. We can change the brightness on the screen. What's interesting about the AMOLED screen is that it doesn't require a traditional backlight. The traditional backlight helps when you're outside. Um, we're going to go through a few other steps to get the backlight to be turned off. And you're going to see that everything is still quite visible. If you turn off the backlight, you're going to save a tremendous amount of battery power. Um, that said, outdoor visibility will probably be pretty bad, but if you spend most of your time indoors, then it would be a good solution. So let's get out of that. Lock screen. You can determine uh, if you want the lock screen to show up when you press the unlock button on the side. I have that turned off because you're already unlocking the device. Why do you need another step to get into your Today screen? So I'm going to click OK. And finally, Main Menu. You can choose the style. Two different styles of the special Samsung Main Menu. Let's go back and to General Settings. We have the Wireless Manager, which looks pretty simple, like the rest of the skin. We have Data Filter which allows you to change sort of how the data data connection works in vi different scenarios. We can go to Launcher, and this is kind of silly actually. It's a, it's a launcher uh, that opens up when you slide open the keyboard that lets you compose it. It's like a quick link to compose an email and SMS, but it slows down your device, so I've left that turned off. If we go into Power, we can take a look at Battery Power, and this is where you turn off the backlight. So I'm going to turn off the backlight, and it's not off yet. I actually think I have to turn it off and turn it back on to get the effect to work. Okay, right now the backlight is off, and yet you can still see things on the screen. 
And if we leave the backlight off, like I mentioned, you're going to get a tremendous increase in, in battery performance on an already uh, very well-performing device in this realm. So keeping battery power, keeping the backlight turned off may be a good idea if you're really trying to squeeze a lot of, uh, of battery life out of this. Very interesting how it does that. And we have some settings for battery power. And I'm going to turn off the device to get it, the backlight to come back on. And you probably just saw it come back on in the last second there. Okay, here we are. And we can also do some CPU throttling. So you can change the CPU performance to high, normal, or low. In our tests, it seems that having this on auto um, is makes it as fast as if you put it on high or normal. If you do it on low, things get a little bit slow. You get some better battery life. Uh, but auto seems to be a really good setting for it. Really rare for a device to have CPU throttling. So that's a very interesting addition. Going down a little bit, we have button. And you can assign a button. This device has a lot of hardware buttons, but only two of them are programmable. And actually, it's technically one button that is programmable. This button right here. So you can have a tap and hold, or you can have a tap. So right now, I've said it. So if I tap on this, I am launched directly into email, because I use email a lot. Very convenient. Or you can do a tap and hold to do the task switcher. So it's nice to have that, that capability. We can change the up and down control, but this doesn't really isn't really relevant, because there's no D-pad. We have wake up, which determines the wake up behavior. And finally, we have the X button. We can end programs forcibly by uh, tapping the X button in the upper right corner rather than it having to go into hibernate. And that's a really good idea on this device. It doesn't have that much free RAM. So you want to check that off if you get this device. OK, let's go back and continue down the line. We can align the screen. We can change the setting for the USB connection. This does have TV out if you have the proper uh, cabling for that. You can register DivX, but I really don't see the point because you can play DivX video whether you register or not. Owner information, and you can change the language to many different languages. OK, so let's go back and let's go to the next thing, which is phone settings. And this is where you get into your default um, sort of settings for, for Windows mobile devices. So we're not going to cover that in depth. Then we have some settings for motion. We have the etiquette mode, which comes from, from HTC, really. So if you turn the device face down, uh, the, the sound is muted. So if you're getting a call, you want to be polite, you put the phone down on its face, it stops ringing. ringing. It's a nice thing to have. Let me turn that back on. Calibration, so we can calibrate the G sensor, although that's really not necessary unless it starts acting a little wacky. Down a little bit more, we have security settings, and we can change it so that there is a, a security lock or a pin that you have to put in when you turn on the device. Network settings, and here we can kind of change the operator settings, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all of that sort of connection stuff. And finally, down here in memory settings, we can see our program RAM, which is extremely low, and yet the device is still fast. It's very strange. Only 50 megabytes free right now, um, and there aren't that. There are a few programs open, actually, three programs open, and the device is still snappy. It must have really good memory management. So we're going to click Done. Main storage, you can kind of take a look at of the 512 megabytes of ROM, how much you have left. Although, obviously, you're probably going to want to get a storage card, which I have done here with an 8 gigabyte storage card. You can format it from the screen, or you can clear memory on the entire device. And finally, there's another tab here, which really doesn't have anything terribly different. We can go into some system settings. Um, turn on clear type, turn on and off error reporting. This is some of the standard Windows Mobile stuff, but we can't change the text size, which is a shame because if you go into email, the text is way too large for such a high resolution screen. And we can also go to installed items and we can go to connection for sort of the browser stuff. So that was a look at settings on the Samsung Omnia Pro B7610. Sam Samsung gives you a lot of ways that you can customize this device, which is really fantastic. I just wish there was an easy way to get back to the standard plain old Windows mobile settings. So there's some stuff in there uh, that would be nice to change. So that's it for now, and be sure to watch out for the full review coming up soon on PocketNow.com. That's it for now.